that would come in handy in a pinch. His mother wasn't watching. interested in real estate because you're about to buy the farm. put a railing on this thing, he thought. their breath. It was strange to be so close to her. What are you thinking? He asked. I'm trying very hard not to think. Me too, he said. Up ahead, he could see the thin silver of Zenobia's personal ship. It looked fast. They would leave all this behind.
somebody had been watching. As they reached her ship, Renato suddenly felt a sharp pain in his stomach. He was surprised to see a crossbow bolt sticking out of it. I was going to lead the Empire to a secret base, said Lapino. But no, you had to screw up my plan because you still got a thing for her. Renato stared at Zenobia. The kiss, was it real, she said with a look of indescribable sorrow. She gestured and said an arcane word, and Lapino went flying into the abyss, screaming, I'm telling your father! Then she knelt down to cradle his head, and her paws felt very soft and warm. Renato stared at the book. He was still alive, again and still only flying away from burning Ubar. Had he lived that adventure, or only dreamt it? Had he really died? It felt so real, not like a dream at all. And he'd lost again. Oh, he hated that. But he had made different choices, and he'd lost in a different way. It was the book, wasn't it? Oracles showed you your destiny, but this... This was showing him different ways he could die miserably. Thanks a bunch, book, he thought. But these were destinies that he did not have to fulfill. But he'd learn another true thing. Lapino was a traitor. Renato had suspected there was something wrong with the mad rabbit. But now he knew there was malice behind his goofiness. <laughs>